It's no secret that using scattering medium materials in your scene in Keyshot can significantly add to the render time, especially if you've got multiple scattering enabled, which I recommend, uh, to enable multiple light bounces coming through the scattering medium material. The reason for the additional render time is simply the complexity of the calculations that need to occur to simulate light coming through the scattering medium particles. Fortunately, however, Keyshot 9 came with two huge additions that really enable you to use scattering medium more efficiently now um, as opposed to using them in Keyshot 8. Those additions are GPU rendering and denoise. Take this scene for example. Here I'm rendering at 1600 by 1200 pixels and I'm currently rendering on my CPU. Uh, in the head up display, you'll see over here that it's been rendering for over two minutes uh, to two minutes and 10 seconds and I've only achieved four samples, okay? And as a result of that, you can see there is noise absolutely everywhere, both on the product at the center and in the scattering medium fog at its base. If I go up to the top toolbar and enable GPU rendering, I'll flip it over from my 2700X, which is an eight core CPU, over to my 2070 Super, uh, which is a fairly high-end gaming graphics card. When it switches over to GPU, you'll see that we're now rendering at nearly one sample per second. Now, there's a slight difference from my understanding between CPU and GPU, um, but if you look at the noise, you'll see as it renders through at that much, much higher rate and that the noise uh, depletes a lot quicker. And so I could probably achieve um, what I recommend between 400 and 1,000 samples, at least 400, I reckon, to smooth this out uh, fairly quickly. Um, probably take about 10 minutes, should be fine um, for me to achieve a smooth result here, which is a perfectly reasonable uh, render time at this resolution. So the second feature is denoise, and that's housed next to the GPU uh, button in the top toolbar. With denoise active, it's gonna smooth over a lot of your render and eliminate what it considers to be noise. In this case, it's smoothed over absolutely everything, and that's because it will have identified some of the features here as noise as well. Now with the denoise, you can change how much of the denoise you actually want active, and that can be really important. In its full setting, it smooths over pretty much everything it can find. And that means that you do lose a lot of the details in your materials. For example, with denoise um, disabled, you'll see that we have quite a lot of details in the chair. So we have a fuzz geometry shader working here uh, to create this fuzzy felt. And then we have uh, quite a lot of texture going on with the wooden base as well. And with denoise active, it smooths over and obliterates all the details there especially when it's at its full state, which is default. So to enable the slider to find that, you need to go over to the image tab on uh, in the project tab uh, over on the right hand side here and look for denoise. Uh, denoise is under both basic and photographic effects, so you'll find it in both of them. And you'll see a slider. At zero, it's not active at all, even though it's ticked, it's not blended in any of that denoise. And then at one is the full denoise, which is set to default. And at one, it smooths over, uh, I think a little bit too much, eliminating too much detail. I recommend using denoise between 0.4 and 0.7. Uh, so at 0.7, we're getting most of the benefits of the denoise, um, but it's not obliterating so much detail, uh, especially in the smoke. Uh, so that's a good uh, range to use denoise at. Uh, and play around with it to see where works best for you. But generally speaking, I don't recommend going too much higher than that. And definitely don't recommend going between 0.9 and 1 because we lose too much detail, even in the very misty smoke um, within the render. Now, my other top tip for using denoise is to do two render passes. So do one render where you've got denoise active and do one render without denoise at all. You can then bring them into Photoshop and have them layered on top of each other. Uh, denoise on top is fine. What you can do then with the denoise layer is to use the eraser tool and start to erase the bits where you want to maintain the detail uh, from the non-denoise render. Okay, so you can reveal parts of the image and leave uh, whatever you want denoise smoothed off. So uh, there are a couple of new features that really help your workflow. Um, with using scattering medium in Keyshot 9. Two fantastic additions and have really enabled me to use scattering medium in more of my scenes 
um, which is absolutely perfect for uh, the Render Weekly Challenge that is active now. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Let me know what you thought about it in the comment section down below. And if you're not subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future key shot, Blender, SolidWorks, whatever content it may be. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.